Hello, Audrey. I'm so sorry I'm a little late today. I did have a hair appointment this morning. I'm sorry. Priorities. Priorities. All right. So, um, yes, we are going to be reading something special today. And unfortunately, I checked on the Sora app and this series is not on the Sora app in either Cobb County, Autry, or in um, Cobb County Public Library's collection. But um, it is one that we have in our house, although he did not have the first book, which was surprising to me. So uh, we are going to be joined today by a guest reader who needs to move a chair over here rather quickly because my son is the Star Wars guru. And as many of you may or may not know, today is May the 4th. Be with you. So it's Star Wars Day. So today we are going to be reading The Secret of the Fortune Wookiee, which is in the um, Origami Yoda series. So um, Spencer, my son, is going to be joining us. And what's funny is both of us meant to put on a Star Wars shirt today, and neither one of us did by accident. So um, I will probably be changing in a little while because I love Star Wars Day. We actually already have plans later today to watch how many episodes? What do you mean by episodes? How many episodes of um, of the show are we watching? So we have four episodes. The last one just came out today. Then after that, we're going to be watching the movies. So what, what are we watching? Star Wars The Clone Wars. Star Wars The Clone Wars, the final episode ever, ever, ever debuted today. So it's already out. So we're going to be watching that in a little while. But he wants to re-watch the last three episodes. So, hey, it's at least not watching all 11 uh, uh, no, we're still doing that. Oh, he still wants to watch all 11. And I want to clue you in on something else while he finds his place to read there on Facebook and on Instagram. I need to start using the Instagram account a little bit more for Autry. But on Facegram, um, and I'm sorry, on Instagram and on Facebook, he's laughing at me. I'm a hot mess today. I quit. I quit. Um, I quit. We have made, um, I made, created a Star Wars bingo card for you to go in and fill out. And all you have to do is if you download it to your um, device, then you can go in and edit the picture and you can put your circles on it. And um, here's mine that I did. So, um, yes, I do have bingo right across there in the middle going across uh, horizontally. Um, so I did get it once. Spencer, I don't think you've done this yet. He did it last night with me, but he didn't do his circles yet. And he said he's going to. So maybe I can talk him into posting his on um, those accounts as well so that you can see what uh, he did. I have not posted mine on Instagram, uh, my completed one, although I did post the blank one there already. I'm not as good at Instagram. I need to get his help to show me how to do some stuff because I don't use Instagram as much. But I need to. I need to start doing that. All right. So he's making coffee right now because, yeah, it's one o'clock and teenager just woke up a little while ago. So um, we are going to begin reading. We might read a couple chapters of this because they're kind of short. Um, they're very short. So we might read two or three chapters of this. But this is an actual book and not on our Sora app today. So and when he comes back in, I'll have him him read some. So how can you have a case file without Dwight? Every case file begins with a question. The first time it was, is origami Yoda real? And then, will Darth Paper destroy origami Yoda? It looks like this case file was going to start and end with a question. How can you have a case file without Dwight? Now, I do like need to show you pictures. Like, there's their case file right there, and it's kind of blank. And it says underneath it, Dwight without Dwight. And then there's some other drawings over on this page. Because du Dwight's the guy who made Origami Yoda in the first place. And it was Origami Yoda who made so much interesting stuff happen that was worth investigating. The first case file I ever made was when Origami Yoda first showed up. I got other kids 
at McGuire uh, Middle School to tell their stories about him. And it proved, sort of, that Origami Yoda was real and could really use the Force. With the second case file, we, sort of, saved Dwight from getting sent to a reform school. But he did end up getting suspended until January, so he did end up at a different school, and he took Origami Yoda with him. Things seem like they have worked out pretty well for Dwight. He's at Tippett Academy, where that girl he likes just happens to go. Well, that's nice for Dwight, but what about the rest of us? We're still stuck here at McGuire Middle School without Origami Yoda to tell uh, uh, to keep us from doing dumb stuff and telling us not dumb stuff we should be doing. The first day back at school without Dwight, Kellen and I were wondering if anything in interesting enough to write and doodle about was ever going to happen again. It definitely seemed like all the fun was over. I'm going to pass the book over to Spencer, and I just finished that sentence. Scooch into the camera. And he's drinking out of his Christmas Star Wars mug. Merry Sithmas. Tomorrow, in case you did not know it, today is May the 4th be with you, but tomorrow is Revenge of the 5th. That you didn't know it was a thing until. Well, I always thought it was Revenge of the 6th, but he said, no, Mom, it's Revenge of the 5th. All right, start reading. Plus, my semi-girlfriend, Sarah, and Kellen's dream semi-girlfriend, Rondola, is that correct? Rondola, yeah. Kept whispering with the other girls and hardly spoke to us. And without Origami Yoda's help, we had no idea what to say to them. Although I think Kellen successfully proved that a 10-minute lecture about why Boba didn't die in the Sarlacc pit. I'm trying to get you to move over into the camera, but I'll just move the camera to you. not to say to them. Harvey had plenty to say, of course. He always does. And it's always boring and loud and usually rude. And now that Origami Yoda was gone, his Darth paper didn't have much to do, which was a relief, but also kind of boring. If you can't write a case file, that means I can't draw on your case file, said Kellen. What are you doing? What are you going to do? Maybe we could finally finish drawing the pictures for that graphic novel I wrote, I said. Uh, you mean the cowboys who ride around on snails? No offense, man. That thing is boring, like. Linoleum. Floor. That's flooring, the, the kind of peel and stick you put down on the floor. You've got to find something to write a case file about. Well, we didn't find anything that day, but the next day we found something, a big something, a big hairy something, the fortune wookie. And that meant we had a question to answer. Can an origami Chewbacca possibly be as helpful as origami Yoda? So we got to work on a case file about it right away. At first, it looked like this would be a case file without Dwight, which seemed kind of sad. But before long, we started having Dwight sightings. So it looked like everything was back to normal. But of course, where Dwight is involved, nothing is ever normal. I'll let you read the comments. Okay, so the comment that he has given his mama, who's the media specialist, librarian, a little heart attack here because he's holding his book like this. And mama doesn't like that because it messes up the spine of the book. Okay, so um, the comments on here, is, Harvey's comment is, so far it looks like the real question is going to be, can this case file um, be even lamer than the last two. All right, read chapter two for me. And of course, he folds <laughs> the book over and looks at me because he knows it ticks me off. So, what can I do? He's a 17 year old. Rise of the Fortune Wookie. Day two of the post Dwight era started the same way. Me and Kellen sitting around in the library wondering if boredom had engulfed the school forever. Harvey was busy annoying us. It was just the beginning of November, and Dwight would have been gone at least until January and probably forever. I mean, why would he come back? He was, a tip, he was at Tippett Academy, which not only had his girlfriend, but was also supposed to be a really expensive private school with fancy lunches and cool classes and stuff. Meanwhile, we were stuck here at a school ruled by Principal Robisky who is basically like the emperor, only meaner and without the lightning bolts. And most of the other kids are either are here either think we're weirdos or wimps or simply aren't aware of our existence until we do something that annoys them. Okay, just say, let me pause there. At Autry, aren't you glad we have a good principal? Nothing like the emperor? 
He's more like a Jedi. All right. All right. There we go. Mom's two cents are done for now. <laughs> Isn't this funny? <clears throat> and our lunches are gross. And we don't have origami Yoda to help us. And on top of all that, as I may have said earlier, things are totally boring. And then, hey guys, called Sarah as she headed for our table. Check this out. She held up this weird thing. It was sort of like an origami finger puppet, but it sure wasn't Yoda. It was brown. All of a sudden, it opened its mouth. I'll let you try and do a Wookiee sound. <coughs> that was the picture. <coughs> Yeah, I hurt my throat doing that. I gotta keep one. Horrible. Horrible. I know. Horrible. Holy fur balls, said Kellen. It's a Chewbacca. Yeah, said Sarah. The white made it for us. He yelled at me from his bedroom window while I was waiting for the bus this morning. Then he threw it down to me in a plastic baggie. Do it again, said Kellen. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Went Sarah, opening Chewie's mouth. There were fangs in there, uh, said Harvey. Whenever he starts a sentence with, uh, you know he's about to be obnoxious. With, uh, you know he's about to, um, I just read the. Okay, it's all right. First of all, not, that's not all one piece of uncut paper. So it's a kirigami? Kirigami. I've never heard of that. Kirigami. K-I-R-I-G-A. M-E. I am -E. M-I. M-I. Not origami. And why does he have a crack down the middle of his face? Harvey was right. Chewie's head seemed to be in a separate in separate sections. Since Dwight is a super awesome origami folder, I was surprised that he hadn't figured out a way to make Chewbacca without a crack down his face. That's the best part, said Sarah. This isn't just a puppet. He's a fortune teller. Dwight called it a fortune wookie. Harvey rolled his eyes. Great. Guess what your fortune is. I think he's having fun with that. That's almost as helpful as Paperwad Yoda's stupid predictions. Uh, Kellen said in the perfect imitation of Harvey. You may remember that Paperwad Yoda's predictions always came true. Always? How about started Harvey? All right, boys, growled Sarah. Best friend, Rondola, do you want to hear what Chewie has to say or not? Yes, said me and Kellen and Lance, Amy. I don't know where you're at. Oh my goodness. We're going to call him Mr. Q or Q because it's Q. Juan Donovo or something like that. Who had come over to see what was going on. Well, it works just like a regular fortune teller, said Sarah. Like a what? A fortune teller. You know, she said, we didn't know. Do you mean you guys don't know what this is? Said Rondo. It's a, it's a cootie catcher. You guys run around or origami this and origami that. And you don't know about cootie catchers. No, but you can tell us, said Kellen. See, he's in love with Rondola, and she usually doesn't even speak to him because she's still mad about something. So he was trying to suck up. Do you see how complicated things are at this school? Do you see why we need help? Anyway, Sarah showed us how it worked. Which Star Wars movie is your favorite episode? Or which Star Wars movie is your favorite? Okay, wait, stop, stop. That is an actual question in here. But before he reads on, we're going to find out. What is your favorite episode of Star Wars movies? Now, are we talking here episodes and Star Wars stories? Or yes. Are we actually talking just uh, out of all 11. Okay. Um, and yes, I counted them. And I've seen them all in order multiple times. Um, I have... I have my top two movies. Okay, what's your top two? Empire? No, not, not Empire. It's Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith, which is movie number three. Where three. Anakin goes dark. I knew that. And Rogue One, only for its space battle. Rogue One. Rogue One is mine. I love Rogue One. Okay. What do they say? <clears throat> Episode what? Five. The Empire Strikes Back, I said. She held the Fortune Wookiee with both hands and made it open its mouth. One. Then she closed it and opened it the other way, right down the center of the face. Two, then the mouth again. Three, the face again. Four, and the mouth again. Five, when she finished, she kept it open. Now look into its mouth. 
You see the four triangles inside? Yes. Okay. Name a Star Wars character. Princess Leia. Anakin Skywalker. Okay. That was her daddy. Well, I also would say Ahsoka Tano, but she's canon. Okay. Okay. I thought... You might need to explain them what canon is. Canon is anything that hasn't happened in the movies. So it's it's a storyline that doesn't really exist when the movies were created. Because she was in Star Wars The Clone Wars. The animated series. The animated series. And then she was also briefly in the animated series Rebels. But she was never in any of the movies. She will be in The Mandalorian. She, which is also a canon. It's canon, but it's more live action than real. Correct. <clears throat> I mean, live action than animated. Well, it's, it's more live action than what we have. You know what I mean. An animated. <laughs> I thought for a second, then said, Wicket. Wicket, sneered Harvey. You picked Wicket out of the whole Star Wars expanded universe. You picked an Ewok. It just popped into my head. Good, said Sarah. That's how it's supposed to work. Now watch. She put her finger on the, on the triangle and said, W. And the, tri- the next triangle, I. And she went around clockwise, moving her finger, one triangle for each letter. C, K, E, T. Now, if we were if we were really doing this, she said, we'd lift up the triangle. I stopped on I stopped on and see what Dwight wrote underneath. Let's see, I said. What what's it say? No, said Sarah. Dwight told me only use it for emergencies. Emergencies, said Harvey. Hey, I just broke my leg. Will you ask your cootie catcher to save me? <clears throat> you know what I mean, said Sarah. And I'm sure Dwight didn't expect you to ask the Fortune Wookiee a question, Harvey. I'm sure he expected you to make fun of it. Hey, he finally got a prediction right. Whooped Harvey, way too loud. Miss Calhoun, the librarian, started walking over to tell us to be quiet. Okay, now aren't you glad that we don't have a library where you have to be quiet all the time? And a librarian who goes, shh, 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 all the time? Just sometimes? All right, go ahead. I wonder if she ever gets tired of having to do that. Okay, now he's giving me something to read, and it's Harvey's comment. Actually, this so-called cootie catcher is really a traditional Japanese fold called a salt catcher. Tommy's comment. Thanks for that thrilling piece of information, Harvey. As usual, your comments add so much. I wonder if he was being sarcastic there. I think so. Do we read on one more chapter? Do y'all want us to read on one more chapter? Do you want to read on one more chapter? Do you? Yeah, go for it. How See, long is it? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Oh, it's just a couple pages. Go for it. You know what? This one's yours. I oh, read the kids. This is the adult. Because this is an adult one, and this is the science library, or scene library. When? Two seconds after the last chapter ended. Before Mrs. Calhoun got to us, we heard another voice coming up behind us, a voice that strikes fear in the hearts of all decent people. You don't need to leave. You can stay. A voice that is like a disturbance in the force. Sarah, I didn't expect to uh, to be the uh, one holding a Star Wars puppet. I didn't expect you to be the one holding a Star Wars puppet. It was Principal Rabuski. I don't know if I said that right. Let me see where it is. Rabski, R-A-B-B, Rabski, R-A-B-B-S-K-I. We, uh, where had she come from? Seriously. I seriously think she had some kind of Sith powers. Well, no, not seriously. Well, I'm sure you kids have heard all sorts of stories about why Dwight isn't here. She glared at me and Tommy. That origami Yoda of his wasn't the reason he was suspended, but it was a major disrupt- disruption of the learning environment. You all know our school policies. You're here to learn, and it's my job to eliminate disruptions and distractions. That's why we're going to have a new policy. All this origami stuff is neat, but it belongs at home. Keep it at home, or I will take it away. No puppets, no paper airplanes, no folded paper of any kind. Let's try to get off to a fresh start, okay? Well, that's the most outrageous thing ever. You can't stop people from folding a piece of paper. What is she going to do? Arrest lunchman Jeff for giving out napkins in the cafeteria? Napkins are folded paper, so they are origami. Anytime you fold paper, that's origami. Books, folded paper. Report cards, folded paper. 
envelopes, folded paper. Toilet paper, not origami because it is rolled, not folded. But a million other things are origami. Mrs. Rabinsky, Miss Rip, Rubsky, Rabsky, I don't know, the principal, the mean one. Um, this is totally unfair, I said. I'm practically an origami master. <coughs> you, Harvey, are the last person who should be speaking right now. You and your Darth Vader have caused almost as much trouble around here as the origami Yoda did. He's not a Darth Paper anymore, I said, holding him up. He's Anakin again. See how the helmet lifts up to show? This is exactly what I'm talking about, said Rabitsky, uh, whatever her name is. And she yanked Darth Paper Anakin right off my finger. Distractions. You're so, you're so distracted by this stuff. You aren't even listening. I don't care who your puppet is. It doesn't belong in school. No more origami at school. It's that simple. I was already thinking about how I was going to sue the school. But then the strangest thing happened. I don't think I can agree with that, Miss Rabsky. It was the librarian, Mrs. Calhoun. See, librarians are nice. <laughs> I'm not big on banning things in the library. Me either. Uh, Calhoun said, anytime the kids are learning something in here, that's a good thing. And we have a nice section of origami books in here now because the kids have been so interested in it lately. For a second, I thought Rabsky was going to do a Vader Force choke grip on Mrs. Calhoun. And then a couple more seconds went by with nothing happening. Finally, Rabsky made this little bow at Mrs. Calhoun, just a slow head nod sort of thing. Okie dokie, she said. If you don't mind them doing it in here, that's fine. But that's it. If I hear about any more problems in the classroom or see you guys waving them around at lunch or in the hall, they're mine. She gave uh, me back Darth paper and then left. And Mrs. Calhoun, who I thought was only interested in making sure we didn't use the computers for games, became our hero. Name any Star Wars character you want, Mrs. Calhoun, I said. I'll make it for you. Well, thank you, Harvey. How about General Grievous, she said. Man, he's going to be hard to make with those four arms. I'm still working on it. Frankly, I wish my arms were longer. So that's what the cartoon of General Grievous is down there at the bottom. General Grievous is not my favorite character. Say it. One of the best villains there is. On camera. One of the best villains there is currently. Uh, he likes General Grievous. Okay. I don't. My comment, it's weird that I never thought about it before, but we do have a lot of origami books and Star Wars books too. And Mrs. Calhoun must be the one who buys them. I had no idea she was paying attention. I thought her only interest was in telling me and Kellen to keep it down to a dull roar. I do say that sometimes. Our hero. And there's a little cartoon at the bottom. All right. So this was the first three chapters that we read of the Fortune Wookiee. I hope you liked it. Um, tomorrow we might read something else for Revenge of the Sith. And um, I don't know that it's going to be the other book in the series. It might be. Our story doesn't have any very many Star Wars. That's something I need to rectify. But Spencer did go and find me three other books that I have purchased for him at a um, yeah, book fair. Story of so we have the story of Obi Wan, we have the story of Luke, uh, Luke and, and then we have Vader. And I'm thinking it might be a chapter from Vader's since he was a Sith. Wasn't he a Sith? That's for you to find out. You're the one who's a Sith. Okay, so Autry, I hope you have a great day, Star Wars. Don't forget to go into Facebook or uh, in the PTSA page or 
on Instagram on the Audrey CLC page. I've not put it on Twitter yet. I may do that in a few minutes, but go in and fill out the bingo. And all you had to do, because Spencer even asked me, mom, how did you edit it with those circles on it? All I had to do was go into on my phone, um, edit the picture. And then um, there's a, a way you can annotate it. And I just did the annotate with circles. And I picked a color that I thought that, um, that, would show up really well. So I did purple, but I also did purple, not only because it's my favorite color, but there's only one, one purple lightsaber out there. Can you name the character? Can I can name the character. Don't you dare say if I can, because you know I can. I know you can. can I you, can name the character. Go ahead right now. It is um, Mace Windu, which is played by Samuel L. Jackson. He's over here very happy that I could I could do that. So, um, Audrey, you guys have a great day. Tomorrow I will be wearing a uh, Star Wars shirt for Revenge of the Sith. Um, I hope you guys have fun today. Watch some Star Wars. Read some Star Wars. Do some something Star Wars. Um, we even have cookie cutters. Maybe we can later make some Star Wars cookies or something. <coughs> I don't know. All right. So, Audrey, have a great day. And um, may the fourth be with you.